Hello world, welcome to another edition of our Ars Electronica Home Delivery Insight Festival program. We are at the beginning of August, which means the temperature in the production offices raised. Um, also, of course, the whole production is on full swing. We are coordinating with all our partners, all our artists all over the world, this five days fantastic festival. Today, I'm here with my really fantastic colleague, Carla Spilotini, and we will both host you through today's session. We actually, yeah, are in the Ars Electronica Center as always in our home delivery programs. So please, whenever you want to discuss something with us, share your comments in the comment section below um, and um, yeah, leave any comments um, and responses to our program. Today's topic of microcosmos and macrocosmos allows us to approach topics really from a completely contra contrary point of view in also a often so needed perspective change. We'll, for example, get some insights also from the Atacama Desert, a gigantic plateau in South America known really worldwide as an epicenter for space exploration and experimentation. The Festival Garden Atacama is organized by the Fundación Mustakis uh, Alma and they will present a web learning platform within the festival that actually brings together more than 50 different references about contemporary understanding of landscape. The garden is actually an outcome of a really fruitful collaboration between Chile and Austria, between Chile and Ars Electronica for uh, many, many years now already in particular with the Ministerio de las Culturas, las Artes y el Patrimonio and the Ministerio de Relaciones Exteriores, Gobierno de Chile. Thanks for this collaboration um, and for this fantastic program coming from the garden. The program of the garden itself um, in the garden Atacama reflects also on the fact that natural environments work on a similar way um, as digital landscapes um, by communicating in a similar way with each other, by also exchanging information between each other, uh, such as, for example, trees and plants also exchange details about their surroundings. By this means, uh, it is also yeah, going to become apparent and obvious how the digital realm can be directly related to the way of a networked landscape. In this context, the artist Samuel Dominguez uh, will present talking about landscape in the 21st century. Uh, he has created uh, with a project really an yeah, exclusive digital interven intervention, also in a way a web page and an archive for the CCTV cameras in the Alma Observatory. The live video will be broadcasting um, during the festival and we will get a sneak peek now. This is Samuel here. Um, so first, I just wanted to say we are all really happy to be part of on the on this edition of the Arts Electronica Festival um, on behalf of Mustakis Foundation and Alma Observatory. Well, first of all, I invited for this project to work collaboratively both um, Alma Observatory, which is in Atacama Desert, and then Fundación Mustakis, which is a wonderful art and education institution in Santiago. And um, one of the things we're doing for the Atacama Garden is a um, learning web platform with curated references on the idea of landscape in the 21st century and how the digital and the human made has changed how we relate to nature. So basically, Fundación Mustakis via Leonor Merin invited the um, architect Diego Lara Koenig to select 
roughly 30 to 40 references between mainly art pieces, um, urbanism and architectural works that in a way challenge the notion of nature and landscape. And on the other hand, our observatory via Valeria Fonsea invited the astrobiologist Sergio Martin, who under the same parameters selected a few scientific papers, talks, videos and books mainly. Also um, under the design of Patrick Cartridge, both references, both arts and scientific ones were entangled on a website so users can freely access the links and um, learn from it using both uh, art related and scientific knowledge um, as a way of putting art and science in a collaborative way And now another sneak peek for an exciting project, uh, this time from our program, the European Artificial Intelligence Lab. <laughs> and you will also find this project at our festival exhibition at the Johannes Kepler University here in Linz. So for those of you who come to visit, uh, please check it out, it will be really nice. Um, within the framework of the AI Lab, uh, international artists had the chance to apply for residences at major scientific institutions worldwide. One of those institutions is the SETI Institute, uh, the Search for Extraterrestrial Life Institute. And they welcomed artists to work with them. They, in this case, hosted uh, the independent artistic research group Interspecifics from Mexico City. Interspecifics are using sound and artificial intelligence to explore patterns from nature as a universal form of communication. And they also develop research and educational tools that evolve around the use of both ancient technologies as well as cutting-edge forms of production. The group built a systematic collection of AI-generated hybrid organisms that are lifelike and self-organized. These hybrid beings between artificial and bacterial life have the ability to evolve and could even provide real insights into how life itself might originate here on Earth and in extraterrestrial habitats. They generated um, organisms which manifest both in the morphological forms as well as in algorithmic forms. So it's a pretty exciting project and what it really looks like you can see in the following video. Codex Virtualis by Interspecifics Collective is an AI art science research framework oriented towards the image synthesis of an open-ended taxonomic collection of new to nature speculative life forms. The two main dynamic inputs fed into and orchestrated by your artificial generative system come from microscopic footage and cellular automata simulations. In this sense, Within the core of the project lies the exploration of morphogenetic visual patterns that inhabit halfway biological and algorithmic life form domains. In a broader metaphorical sense, the AI generative models using this workflow of our multi layer computational ecosystem can be considered analogous to the role of evolution within biology. In this process, a change in the gene pool of a population genotype expression can produce a continuous stream of novel organisms, phenotype selection. Similarly, by using in silico evolutionary architectures, we explore different algorithmic recipes under which the biological concepts of variation, heredity, fusion and cooperation can aesthetically manifest themselves and lead to the novo hybrid morphological profiles. One of the fundamental processes adopted within our system is the mixed training of our generative adversarial networks, GAN. In this task, two qualitative different datasets 
Merge by Adopting Domain Adaptation Machine Learning Strategies, leading to the emergence of new visual samples. These B-model architectures allow us to explicitly represent and inform transfer between domains, analogous to horizontal gene transfer mechanisms in biology. The latter being an increasingly acknowledged relevant source of evolutionary novelty due to genome acquisition, mutualistic interactions, and synergy between organisms. From the speculative symbiotic relationships between uh, microorganisms and algorithms of interspecifics to a garden which actually analyzes also the micro effects on our environment. The garden Bologna with the title Data Tour Ditaly, curated by Federico Bomba and Filippo Rosati, is a whole network and a project on data and environment. They actually connected culture and scientific organizations all over Italy in different kinds of landscapes like um, mountains, cities, also islands and seaside areas um, and feature in their exhibition uh, as a main project um, the work Moss from Marco Parotti. The artist is a familiar artist um, for us Electronica. He showcased a fantastic project back in 2019 in Post City. So we are very much looking forward to have him back in the festival program. Mosses uh, belong to the evolutionary oldest land plant group. They have also made their way from using traditional medicine to a yeah, big spectrum of uses today. They please us, of course, with their presence, but they also monitor the quality of our environment. And they filter our air and water. They also provide opportunities for uh, treating severe human diseases. And if we simply actually let them grow, um, they will also restore biodiversity and will help us um, to hold greenhouse gas emissions and therefore also tackle tremendous ecological problems. The kinetic sound sculpture is a dome overgrown with moss. Um, its movement is driven by the readings of nitrogen or oxide uh, concentrations at various locations on our planet. Let's look into the project. The Po Valle in Italy is a big triangle of land that includes uh, Milan, Turin and Bologna, just to name some of the most known cities. And it is also one of the most industrialized European areas. For this and for being confined between the Alps and the Apennines, which prevent the wind from flowing, it is also one of the most air polluted areas in Europe. Since the onset of the pandemic, Air pollution has been diminishing in many parts of the world, mainly because of the decrease in mobility. Unfortunately, things are not so easy. Some particles responsible for the air pollution in the Po Valley have actually increased during the lockdowns. Since pollution doesn't just come from means of transportation, but also from industries and home eating, for instance, this phenomenon is indeed very complex and there are no easy solutions. When answers are not at hand, artists should jump in for opening questions. This is why, with our partner Kilowatt, we have asked Marco Barotti, a media artist based in Berlin, to produce at uh, Le Serre de Giardini Margherita for a Resilience Festival in Bologna, a new version of Moss. Moss is a kinetic sound sculpture driven by air quality data generated by the World Air Quality Index. The living sculpture is designed to analyze the air of our city and to reinterpret the data with the breathing patterns and evolving soundscapes. Data are not good or bad, they simply are. Their aim is, or it should be, empowering our knowledge about the complex ecosystem we live in. When it comes to environmental data like these ones, the situation gets even more tricky. In fact, the data give us important keys for interpreting our surroundings, but they also open wider questions about the ecology or 
in other words, the way in which we relate as human beings to the ecosystem we live in. MOSS contributes to global research and engages the citizens to take part in the discussion about air quality and earth democracy, creating civil engagement by learning from the wisdom of nature and the service of technology. And in our Youth Perspective segment today, we want to introduce you to the work Little Dancing Stars by the talented young Sarah Hölzl. Sarah is uh, very active in her free time, where she enjoys handcrafting and building things with Lego, as well as playing instruments and attending dance classes. But it wasn't unlike uh, with many, many other people around the world that, of course, during the COVID-19 crisis, she had to stay at home and couldn't really go to any dance classes, which was pretty sad. But she was, of course, able to help herself. And um, with all the knowledge that she had gained uh, with her tinkering, she created Vernie the robot uh, and used him as her dancing partner. In a meticulous research process, she programmed the robot dancer she synchronized him to the right music, she dressed Vernie for the occasion, and then proceeded to learn the same steps as the robot. Without further ado, please enjoy their dance. This, this is actually bringing us already to the end of um, yeah, today's session on micro and macrocosmos. I would say we could even claim that we are building our own microcosmos uh, this year back um, in the production offices with our festival schedules. Um, our team is currently working really nonstop on figuring out how to, yeah, fix prime times, I would say, uh, in a festival which is streamed all over different time zones, all over the world. Um, so, um, of course, also uh, inviting audiences in their pyjamas, for example, or um, at the very, very early morning coffee. Um, and we are trying to yeah, get us through this big puzzle here. Back on our wall, we have, for example, a uh, screenshot of our little helper of how we are setting this of how we are fixing the different kinds of programs for you to get really a comprehensive understanding of this year's festival program we are fi trying to fit about 900 festival program points in, in five days so it is really a big challenge but we promise we will give our best to fit together a fantastic schedule for you we have 34 more days so we have a bit of time to work on this still and we are already very very much looking forward for you to discover this schedule yeah this brings us uh, really to the end to the very end of this session um, and uh, we are very much looking forward um, to welcome you soon again stay tuned and goodbye <laughs>